on today's Maker Mashup, a filament runout sensor you don't have to mod your printer for. So today we're going to be working on a filament runout sensor that does not attach to your printer. Now I know what you're thinking. How are we going to get this to work? How's it going to know when it runs out? What's really cool about this sensor is that a lot of people have either already modded their printer for a BL Touch or something else that doesn't now allow them to add a filament runout sensor. So what I designed was a filament runout sensor that enables you to use Octoprint and sends the command wirelessly over to Octoprint to pause your printer. This project's really easy to build. You're going to use one microcontroller. This is one that's based with an ESP8266 system on a chip. We're going to be using a slightly smaller version, which uses a WeMOS form factor. And then we're just using one micro switch. This switch is actually going to hook directly to here and fit right inside the 3D print. Once you're done, the rest of it is all configuration and it works off USB 5 volt power. So you don't have to do anything special to make this work. You can be up and running in less than an hour. So let's get to work. The first step is going to be to solder the micro switch directly to the board. We're going to solder the ground to the C on the micro switch and we're going to solder D2 to the NO or normally open on the micro switch. In order to do this, you're going to need to bend these pins ever so slightly. Just use a pair of needle nose pliers and bend them gently. And then you'll see that the two pins for the ground and D2 line up perfectly. Now that's done, drop a little solder on here and we'll be done with the first step. Be careful to make sure that you don't create any solder bridges here. These are pretty close together, but a little bit of solder and care, and you'll have this attached in no time. Make sure when you solder this that the switch is on the side with the black serial chip, not on the side with the Wi-Fi chip. Now you're going to want to head over to Thingiverse and download the project files for the 3D print. These are located in the description. There's also a link to the source code, which we'll cover later. If you need help building this project, don't forget, you can always join our Discord server. It's free and you can chat with other makers, find out what they're working on, and talk about projects that you're working on. The link is in the bottom of the description. Next step, we're gonna just take this board and we're gonna drop this right into the 3D print. Then you're just gonna wanna put the cover on and screw into place. A quick note, I did not use PTFE tubing a lot of these designs do include it, and you can certainly use it. However, I found that the clearance is tight enough and works well enough without it. So one less part for the entire project. Now you're just going to want to use the USB. It's a standard micro USB. And if everything's working correctly, you should have a blue light. Last step is just a quick test to make sure the filament feeds through smoothly. So this was pretty easy to put together. All that we had to do was solder the micro switch directly to the microcontroller and put that inside the case. Then we just used a couple of screws to assemble it and we're ready to go. Now the next step here is programming it with the Arduino IDE and that will only take a couple of minutes to configure and you're gonna be up and running with your new filament sensor. Downloading the source code, there's a link for this in the description. You only need to change a few lines in the source code file once you've got it loaded in the Arduino IDE. The first one's going to be the SSID of your router. This is what you typically would connect with for your phone. And then the password to that same router. From there, you're going to need to get some information out of Octoprint. That's going to be our next step here, which is your API key. The API key is located under the wrench in the settings. Then you're just going to want to click on API. And then from there, copy your API key. Then you're going to just paste that in 
And then the last thing is to configure this for the Octoprint base URL. This may or may not have a port number at the end. It's gonna vary by how you originally set up Octoprint. Make sure that you're using an IP address here, not a DNS name, as I did encounter a few issues using a domain name if you're using one for your Octoprint instance. The design was so that way you could hook this onto your 3D printer directly with just a simple zip tie. And something else to note is that you can move this between printers. So if you don't feel the need to run a filament runout sister all the time, you can move it between printers. Just make sure you update your Octoprint key so you're pausing the correct printer. I simply strapped this down with the zip tie. And then once that was done, I was ready to feed the filament through. Last step is to plug in the USB cable and this will power it on. If everything is successful and it connects to Octoprint, you should get a solid blue light that blinks every couple of seconds. All right, we're ready to print. Now that we have a print started, we're gonna test it out and we're gonna clip the filament at the top and see if the runout sensor stops the print. The print stopped and we have a successful filament runout sensor running off of Wi-Fi. Well, that's it for this video. Hey, if you enjoyed it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you get notifications of our new videos. You can also check out our website at makersmashup.com and it has links to our Twitter and our chat discord where you can chat with other makers. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time.